What's up guys, Vital Syntax here, and in my last video I showed you how to monitor your frame rate while playing PC games with MSI Afterburner, and one of the most requested things you guys wanted to see was an overclocking tutorial. Now I have a GTX 680, it's an NVIDIA graphics card, designed by ASUS, and it's the Direct CU2 OC 2GB edition. Now this is the only card that I can really give you guys an overclocking tutorial on because I don't have experience with ATI or slash AMD cards and I don't have experience with older generations of NVIDIA cards. So what I would recommend doing is I'll have some links in the description to a couple different websites and forums that have a great community that will surely either already have tutorials out there or that would be willing to answer questions that you guys have about overclocking other graphics cards. So specifically the GTX GeForce 600 series cards are what I can show you guys how to overclock. And that includes the 660s, the 660 Ti's, the 650s, 670s, anything that has a 6 and then something after it, uh, it's going to overclock in a similar way to the card that I have, which is a GTX 680. Now, there's different types of platforms when we talk about PC gaming. There's desktops, there's laptops, and now there's even tablets. And I wouldn't recommend overclocking a tablet. They're really not designed to be overclocked. And I also wouldn't recommend uh, overclocking most laptops. There are some exceptions that are specifically designed to be overclocked and push a little bit farther. But for the most part, this is specifically designed as a tutorial for desktop graphics cards that have dedicated GPU cards that take up PCI slots in your on your motherboard. Okay. Now the first thing you want to do when you overclock is find an overclocking tool. So there's a couple different options. There's MSI Afterburner, which is the one I'm going to be using. There's EVGA Precision. There's Asus GPU Tweak. Essentially they're all the same program with a different look, a different feel. There's definitely some differencing features, but the core uh, tool is essentially the same uh, application. And that's powered by RiverTuner, which RiverTuner is essentially what does all of the adjustments to the graphics card. And it's kind of what's what the uh, MSI Afterburner is built off of. You can actually see down here in the bottom it says powered by RiverTuner. I'll have a link in the description to MSI Afterburner, which is the one that I would recommend people use. If you, would, if you have experience with a different one, then that's completely fine. Most of the procedure for overclocking will be similar. So once you have MSI Afterburner downloaded, I'll put a link in the description, you'll have two files. One will be MSI Afterburner install, and one will be the other one will be Combustor install. I'd recommend installing both of them because we're going to use both of them in this tutorial. Essentially, MSI Afterburner is the actual tool itself, and Combustor is an overclocking uh, tool that allows you to set your GPU to 100% load to stress test the card. Okay, so once you have it installed, the basic overclocking procedure for 600 series cards is goes as follows. The first thing you want to adjust is your power limit. So essentially your power limit, which you can see right here, power limit is the amount of power that the graphics card is capable of drawing. Now by default, a graphics card has a set TDP or wattage value, and it will use that many watt it, watts when it's at full load. Now, if you're somebody like me that doesn't care how much electricity your graphics card is using, as long as that means that you're going to get more performance out of your graphics card, you want to set that power limit to as high as it'll allow you to set it. In my case, it's 159%. And whenever you make a change to these uh, values, just go ahead and press apply. Now, you will see I pr you might not have core voltage available to you right now, and we're not going to be using core voltage at all in this tutorial. Adjusting your voltage is kind of an advanced way of basically in, uh, increasing the amount of voltage that goes through the card, allowing it to uh, use more electricity to overclock even farther, but it also is going to increase heat output, uh, and it can also cause other longevity issues and stuff like that. But if you know what you're doing, adjusting your voltages can be a, a very good way to incre increase the amount of overclocking cap capability of your card. If you want to turn that on, you can just check these unlock voltage control and unlock voltage monitoring in the general tab of the settings, but we're not going to be messing with that in this tutorial. So once you set the power limit, now we have to adjust the core clock and the memory clock, which are both measured in megahertz. So where you actually want to do them separately, you don't want to do them at the same time. And what we're going to be using is combustor, which there's actually a button right here you can press to launch combustor. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the core clock by let's say 25 megahertz at a time and we're going to run combustor and if combustor runs flawlessly there's no crashing there's no graphical issues then our overclock is successful 
and we want to push it even farther. And we're going to keep pushing it until it crashes. And once it crashes, then we know that that point is not stable. And we want to pull back a little bit and find a stable point where we can get the highest amount of uh, megahertz from our core clock before, without any, any type of uh, stability issues. And then after we're done with the core clock, we'll do the exact same thing for the memory clock. So the procedure goes like this. You're going to go ahead and type in plus 25, press enter, press apply. It's going to increase our core clock by 25 megahertz. Now that's not a whole lot, so for the most part, most people should be able to uh, you know, push it that far without any issue. I'm going to go ahead and run combustor, and you'll see it does this graphics rendering. It'll show you your GPU load and your GPU temperature. It's essentially just maxing the graphics card out uh, to 100% load or close to it and monitoring to make sure that nothing you know, bad happens to it. Now this is a synthetic test of overclocking. And another great tool is just to use your favorite first person shooter or whatever type of games you're playing. In my case, that'd be like Battlefield 3 or Crisis 3, uh, a, a game that's GPU intensive. So something like, um, like I said, Battlefield 3 or Crisis 3 or Metro 2033. If you're using a game like DayZ or Arma 2 or Arma 3, those are CPU intensive games. So that's not really going to help you very much when you're trying to um, stress test your car because it actually won't use very much of your graphics card capability. So we're going to go ahead and close that. You can see it's a stable overclock and we're going to go ahead and push it farther. So I'm going to do 50 megahertz this time. Press apply and hit combustor again. If you don't see this little combustor icon, that means that you didn't install combustor. Uh, or maybe you haven't restarted uh, AMSI Afterburner your computer after you installed it. So either make sure that you uh, have Combustor installed or restart your computer or restart the program. Or if you're not going to use Combustor at all, you can do the exact same thing I'm doing here. But instead of running Combustor every time you want to stress test, stress test, go ahead and you know find your favorite game. Hopefully find an empty server uh, like Battlefield 3 here and just join a match and see if uh, your graphics card has any performance issues. You can also fit, switch to uh, window mode by holding Alt and pressing Enter. That allows us to tab in and out of our game while we're stress testing a little bit more. So I'm going to tab back over to MSI Afterburner. And our overclock is still stable, so I'm going to push it up to 75. Press Enter, press Apply. And if Battlefield 3 decides to load. Just go ahead and spawn in here. And you can see we're running the game without any issues. I go ahead and maximize it so it's full screen windowed. Now you might want to turn up your graphics settings to the max maximum. I have everything set to low as of uh, as of right now. Uh, but uh, turning all your graphics settings is going to make sure that your GPU is under full load. So I'm going to go ahead and tab out of here again and just minimize battlefield. So I'm gonna go ahead and push it a little bit farther. We're gonna go up to 100 megahertz and go ahead and press apply. Go back into battlefield, make sure we're stable. Now I'm, I'm testing this very quickly. I'm only playing battlefield for a couple of seconds and only letting combustor run for a couple of seconds. Now if you wanna get a very stable overclock, you're probably gonna run a, end up running combustor or playing battlefield um, for a good amount of time, at least like 10, 20, 30 minutes, maybe in a couple hours. So the best way I've found to overclock, at least for a specific game, is to just push my over, push it to a certain point, say for example 100 megahertz, and just play. And if it ever crashes, then I know that my overclock isn't stable and I need to turn it down a bit. And then I'll adjust it, and then if I ever crash again, I'll just turn it down a little bit more until it's to a point where there's no crashing issues. All right, everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and Alt F4 out of Battlefield because we're done with that. So for my card, I've found that about 100 megahertz is a good overclock for my core clock. If I push it anything farther than that, yeah, it can be stable for a while, but sometimes it will crash. Now I'm gonna show you guys what a crash looks like. So I'm gonna push my card all the way up to 200 plus megahertz, and I know for a fact that it's going to crash. But don't worry, having your graphics driver crash is not the end of the world. It's probably not gonna do, it's, it's not gonna do damage to your graphics card, and it's part of overclocking. Obviously, you don't want to just have it crash over and over and over. I'm sure that wouldn't be good for it, and it's no fun. So now that it's set to 200 megahertz, I'm going to go ahead and run Combustor, and you're going to see it's going to crash. 
almost instantaneously because essentially I've pushed the core megahertz too far. You'll see that it says NVIDIA graphics cards lost connection with the display. I'm gonna say no, and you'll see down here in the system tray, display drivers stopped responding. And that's okay, I'm gonna go and press close on that. So at this point we know that 200 megahertz is too far. So I would go ahead and notch that down to 175, blah, 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 blah. But for me, I've already done all this testing and I've found that 100 megahertz is my ideal clock. Now, memory clock's a little bit different because when you push your memory too far, it's not going to crash your display driver. Instead, it's gonna give you a bunch of weird artifacting. And I'm not gonna show you guys that in this video because it's gonna require system restart. Whereas if you're doing the core clock, all that happens when you push it too far is the display driver crashes and it relaunches. Where with the memory clock, when you push it too far, let's say I push it up to 600 megahertz, where I found that my stable is about 500. At 600, the card would start, it would work properly, but you would start seeing these weird colors and flashes and you know pixels disappearing and uh, checkerboarding and other weird things to do. Uh, with your display. It wouldn't actually crash in most situations, but you add up with a bunch of artifacting and weird I weird issues. And the only way to get rid of those issues is by restarting your entire system. So I'm not going to be doing that in this video. But it's the same principle. You want to increase this by uh, increments of 20 or 25 or maybe even 50 at a time until you get to a point where you start having issues. Dial it back a bit and then find where a stable position for you is. Now I find, I've found that a total of 500 megahertz is about stable in my situation. So you can see the overclocking potential for the memory is much higher than the overclocking potential for the core clock. I can push it you know, five times farther um, than I could with the core clock. So I'm gonna go and run, com run Combustor again, and you'll see that I don't run into any issues. I've been running this overclock with 100 plus on the core and 500 plus on the, on the memory for almost like three or four weeks now and I've never had a crash. And if I did ever have a crash, I would just notch it down, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25 megahertz and start using that new stable benchmark um, or that new stable overclock uh, number. So as you can see, no issues here. Card's running totally fine. GPU load, temperature, and, and stuff like that. So another thing that's very important to be monitoring while you're overclocking, this is probably something I should have mentioned earlier, is your temperature. Now, every graphics card has a different, or every model of graphics card has a different cooling solution. In my case, my card is a triple radiator, or tri triple slot card, it doesn't have a radiator, sorry. It has um, 220 millimeter fans, I believe, on it, or no, they're not 120, they're 80 millimeter. But regardless, it has two large fans on it, it has a triple slot um, heat sink on the actual uh, graphics card itself. So it's a very beefy heat sink. It's one of the beefiest graphics cards you can get. And the larger the heat sink, the larger the fans, and the faster those fans are spinning, the cooler your graphics card is going to run. So you can see the temperature right here uh, is about 43 while it's idle. And we were uh, testing it, it was about 60, 65, something like that. Now, you don't want your graphics card to go above 80 in most cases. If it reaches 95, and most, most graphics cards will automatically turn themselves off because once they reach about 100, you have melting issues where components on the PCB of the graphics card will actually start being destroyed by being melted or overheated or burned or things like that. So in most cases, you never want it to reach 95. It's probably a good idea to never let it reach 90, and it's probably a good idea to never even let it reach 85 or 80. So what you can do if your graphics card maybe doesn't have the best heat solution is do a custom fan curve. So if you click the settings here, go to fan, you can enable user defined software automatic fan control. And this allows you to adjust the fan based off of temperatures. So I could say at 30 degrees, run my fan at 30%. And then when it hits 50 degrees, um, turn the fan up to, or once it hits 70 degrees, turn the fan up to 50%. And by the time it hits 90 degrees, make sure my fan is running at 100%, that way it never reaches 95 or 100. And if you wanna set something up like that, you can, if you have some heating issues. I've personally found that the default um, software controlled fan uh, it, it, with my graphics card works totally fine. I've never had any heating issues, but uh, if you're gonna be pushing your car really far, especially if you're doing any voltage monitoring or control, you know, 
increasing the voltage of your graphics card to improve the overclocking potential, then you're probably going to want to increase the fan speed um, and cool down the card a little bit better. Now, there's another thing I should, probably should have mentioned earlier, and that's that a GTX 680 is the highest end 600 series cards. I guess there's a 690, which is essentially two 680s, and there's also the Titan, which isn't even the same uh, core, and that's a, kind of in a completely different category. But regardless, uh, if you have a lower end card, say for a G, uh, for example a GTX 670 or a GTX 660 Ti, a 660, a 650, whatever other series cards you have, the graphics uh, and overclocking potential is going to be different. So you might not be able to push your card to a plus 100 megahertz and plus 500 core megahertz. Um, that's just my personal situation. And like I said earlier, even if you have a GTX 680, even if you have the exact same card I have, you might not be able to push it as far as I have. You might even be able to push it farther. It just depends. So um, I guess if you have a 680, you might be able to use my numbers as a reference point to test it yourself or look online and find what other people have pushed their cards to. Maybe if you have a 660 Ti, just do some Google searches on uh, GTX 660 Ti overclocking numbers or um, potential or whatever other keywords you want to use. See what other people have pushed their cards to and use that as a reference point. Don't just copy and paste it because there's a good chance it's not going to work perfectly on your system or your system might be able to push it farther than that. So it's all about testing your system. And if that's something that you're not really interested in, well, I don't know why you've watched this entire video, um, but it's it's it just kind of something that you have to do. That's part of uh, PC gaming if you want to get the full potential. Obviously, you don't have to overclock your graphics card, um, but if you want to get the full potential and the full overclocking um, capabilities of your card, that is something you're going to have to test. And for me, it took me about probably an hour to two hours to do all of this testing that I did um, and find a, a stable overclock. And hopefully now that you guys understand uh, some of the ways that you can go about doing that, hopefully you guys will be able to do it as well. I will be monitoring the comments probably on this video for a couple days. Um, and if you guys have any questions or if you guys have any issues, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try and help out as much as I can. Or you guys can send me a twit, uh, tweeter. <laughs> I mean a tweet. I said twit or tweeter. <laughs> if you if you want to send me a, a tweet on Twitter, um, then I will probably respond. I, I respond to most of the messages I get on there. If you have any issues um, on on the on overclocking your card. So anyway, hopefully you guys found this video uh, helpful. And if you did, feel free to give me a like or a favorite. It certainly took me uh, quite a while to. Uh, memorize what I was going to explain and explain it in a understandable manner. So be greatly appreciated. But uh, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.